Hey everyone, welcome to the channel for another Escape from Tarkov video. I've got some more weapon builds for you today, and in this one, I'm talking about some underrated weapons that tend to slip under the radar of most players. It can be really tempting to just stick with weapons that have the fastest time to kill and lowest recoil, like the HK416, M1A, and VSS. But there's a lot of great builds out there for lesser used weapons that are solid meta choices, or just a great budget choice for mid-tier loadouts. In this video, I'll be talking specifically about the RPK, DTMDR, and SVD. Three weapons that are quite easy to set up builds for, and also quite useful in PvP, either because of their raw stats, damage, or pure cost effectiveness. For these builds, I've tried to come up with a mix that can be used at various levels, not just stuff that's locked behind level 4 traders, so hopefully you can find this useful regardless of your level. So with that intro out of the way, let's take a look at the first build that I have for you, a 5.56 MDR setup that isn't locked behind high level traders, and gets you a solid suppressed weapon for only about 100,000 rubles. I've covered the 762 MDR in a few videos now, but I've never really taken the time to put up a build for the 556 version, because in previous patches I honestly didn't use it much, and mostly preferred the M4 if I was running 556. In the current 12.6 and 12.7 patch though, with the recent buffs to M855A1, and the addition of a new 556 suppressor with a good price and great stats, the 556 MDR has really earned a place in my books as a solid budget choice for a suppressed 556 weapon. The fire rate is a little slow, and you can't get the recoil down down nearly as low as the M4 or HK, but the MDR is also much cheaper and much easier to set up compared to those rifles, and none of the parts are locked behind level 4 traders, making it a pretty good mid-game weapon or a late-game budget build. To start this build off, just grab an MDR on the flea market, where they usually sit at around 50 to 60,000 rubles on most days, and sometimes less if the raiders are dropping them like candy. Now because you can't change many of the parts, all you really need to do is add a suppressor, foregrip, and a sight. For the muzzle, I stick with the Surefire SF3P muzzle device, then add the SOCOM RC2 suppressor onto this for nearly best in slot recoil while also running suppressed. Plus, it color matches with the MDR perfectly, which is just a bonus. Next, in the foregrip slot, I actually experimented with a ton of different options in the presets menu, and even going for the most expensive foregrip option, it didn't do much for the total recoil. So I just stuck with a simple, budget-friendly option for this one, the AFG M-Lock foregrip sold by Peacekeeper Level 3. This one has great ergonomics and doesn't require an extra rail to go on here, so it's also pretty budget friendly that way. I've also got a 2.5 inch M-Lock rail to mount a tactical device, and on this one I just have the X400 flashlight, but you can use whatever light or laser you prefer. Finally, to finish off the build you just need a sight, and depending on your preference that might change the cost of the build by a little bit. But on this setup, I usually just run an EOTech holo sight, or sometimes an LCAN 1 to 4 scope. That's pretty much it for my simple MDR build, and you can add some MBUS iron sights for extra ergonomics, but the MDR doesn't really need it. For overall stats, this build comes out to 65 recoil and about 80 ergonomics, which is pretty solid and controllable with the MDR's low fire rate. For the overall cost on this build, you're looking at around 110 to 120,000 rubles, depending on the flea market price. I think this build is pretty solid at this price point for a suppressed rifle, and if you pair it with M855A1 ammo, it's a nice budget-friendly build for mid to late game questing and PvP. Next up for this video, I've got an RPK build for you that gets some absurdly low recoil for a 545 rifle after the buff the RPK received during this patch. I've covered the RPK before, but my previous builds were using the shorter barrel for a more purely budget focused recoil build. This one is similar, but using the longer barrel to really bring the recoil down by quite a bit, getting it lower than a best in slot AK-74 build. To start this one off, you can get an RPK from proper level 4 or on the flea market for around 60,000 rubles. If you can snipe one off the market with the longer barrel attached for this price, that's ideal for the build and will save you about 10,000 rubles total. If you can't get one with a long barrel, proper level 4 sells the 20 2 inch RPK 16 barrel for about 18,000 rubles, and then you can sell the short barrel back to mechanic to save a bit of money. Next, for the muzzle device, I go for the PWS CQB compensator, which is the best in slot recoil attachment, since unfortunately it can't use the top tier 545 suppressor. Next up, the foregrip on this one is the Zenit RK1 grip, sold by Skier Level 3, giving you almost best in slot recoil and a bit of extra ergonomics as well. For the stock on this build, I like the MFT BUS stock on the RPK for that best in slot recoil at a cheap price, though it does have some fairly poor ergonomics. The HKE1 stock is a good second choice, but it's more expensive and locked behind Peacekeeper level 4. 
For the pistol grip, I go with the Zenit RK3 grip for the best in slot ergonomics, but you can use a cheaper option if you want, like the Tapco saw grip or something similar. The optic on this one is once again just an EOTech hollow sight, and if you go with a different optic, you'll have to factor in the difference for the price on the build. Finally, just to get the ergonomics up to 50 points while using a 60 rounder, I also add the Zenit RP1 charging handle from Skier Level 2, which is pretty cheap and adds ergonomics. For the overall stats on this build, the recoil is at 41 points, with about 60 ergonomics total. So basically on par, if not slightly better than a best-in-slot AK-74, while also requiring less expensive attachments from high-level traders. The overall price on this build is about 145,000 rubles total. It's not that much less expensive than a best-in-slot AK, but it has better recoil stats and requires less overall modding, so I've become quite fond of this setup in the 12.6 and 12.7 patch. For the last build in this video, I wanted to take a look at the SVD, which is in kind of a tricky place right now, especially with the extra 5 HP which was just added to the thorax, making it less of a one tap machine. The SVD is a very powerful rifle, firing one of the largest calibers currently in Escape from Tarkov, and capable of zeroing basically any armor in the game with most of its ammo types. That being said, it's also a heavy clunky rifle with pretty bad base stats in ergonomics and recoil. The SVD requires patience and finesse to use effectively, but if you can get used to the high recoil and heavy weight, it's actually a pretty amazing PvP weapon that can two-shot kill to the chest through any armor in the game with relatively cheap SNB ammo. Personally, I think the biggest goal for an SVD build is to maintain decent ergonomics, since you can't really do much about the recoil regardless, and if you aren't careful, the SVD drops below 20 ergonomics pretty quick, which makes sniping less than ideal. For this first build, the main addition is the SVD Modern handguard, which is sold by proper level 3, but is also available on the flea market most days for the same or a cheaper price compared to proper. This handguard has pretty solid recoil and ergonomic stats, plus a rail for a canted sight, and it can mount attachments using M-lock rails. For this build, I got a 2.5 inch and 4.1 inch M-lock rail, and then added a Magpul RVG foregrip. This one is unlocked at Peacekeeper level 3 and has a great balance of recoil and ergonomics for the SVD. For the tactical device, use what you prefer, but I usually stick with the X400 pretty much all the time. Next up, you can add the modern SVD rail to this handguard, which gives you another increase to ergonomics and recoil, plus a space to mount scopes on a nicely placed rail. This attachment is sold by proper level 4, but again, you can check the flea market and often find it for less money because it spawns in weapon crates. For the optic on this setup, I usually run it with an Elcan Spectre 1-4 scope because it's fairly cheap on the market and it's a very versatile scope for close and long range fights. You can also run it with a red dot or any optic really, but this is my preferred setup. Finally, I finish it off with a Palm US AK pistol grip from Peacekeeper level 3 for the extra ergonomics, and that's it for the build. If you want to add a suppressor to this setup, you're going to need the SVD thread adapter from Mechanic level 3. Then you can add the Rotor 43 7.62x54 suppressor onto that and run the SVD a bit quieter. However, you're going to take a pretty big ergonomics penalty, and it's pretty pricey if you choose to do this. For the stats on this one, you've got 139 recoil and around 45 ergonomics. No matter how you build the SVD, it kicks like crazy, so I prioritize keeping the ergonomics above 40 if possible. For the total cost on this build, you're looking at around 140 to 150,000 rubles, or about 190,000 if you run it suppressed because of the high price of the suppressor. Well that about covers it for these three builds on weapons that I think are a bit underrated by the Tarkov community. I'm prepared for all the comments telling me to just run meta builds that are sure to be incoming, but I hope you enjoy these builds and can get some good use out of them if you try them yourself. Personally, most of my joy from playing Tarkov comes from building off-meta setups like this, so stay tuned for more builds like these from me in the future if you enjoyed. I'll be streaming more Escape from Tarkov on Twitch and exploring the 12.7 patch and all the new content, and there's a link to my stream down in the description. I've also got links to my Twitter, Discord server, and Patreon page down there for anyone looking to join the community or support the channel. Thanks for checking out the video, and until next time, stay safe in Tarkov City.